Welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm just going to get right into taking some readings off of one of those radiant energy receiver circuits I was showing in the last couple videos. It's going to be pretty interesting, but then I'll just let you draw your own conclusions. This is a circuit that I'm referring to. I try to make it just as simple as I possibly could. If you haven't seen my last two videos on the radiant energy receiver circuit, I would suggest reviewing them to get a better understanding yet. So what we have, we have a long wire antenna with a coil attached to it. Then the coil is then attached to a piece of aluminum foil. Then I have a pickup strip that goes down to two diodes into some LEDs, maybe one or several LEDs. And then either no ground at all is attached to this or a virtual ground. There's no uh, direct earth ground connected. Now this part of the circuit where I have this dotted line around is similar to what people call the Avraminko plug. They use that to detect high frequency radiation coming off of different objects. But so it's similar to that. This will just have like a longer probe. What I'll do now is take different readings in different parts of this circuit. This is this circuit right here. It's my coil. This is my piece of aluminum foil, piece of uh, packing tape over that, and a strip of copper tape over that. It's just this stuff right here. This is my virtual ground sitting on a piece of plastic so it's insulated from the floor. And I have some LEDs running right now to it. Now the coil needs to be tuned in with a plate. And to do that, I have a ferrite rod here. You can kind of tell it's a little jumpy right now. If I put that right there, smoothens it out. But basically, in order to get resonance with both of these items here, I've been just changing the size of the plate. Cut it down or add a little bit to it. Now, the antenna is right here. I have a number of things attached to the antenna. I got branched off here. This is where it comes in from the window. And this is the one I'm using right here. And I have other similar circuits running different LEDs. These are made a little bit different. It's trying to condense the circuits down into some jars, but that didn't work the best. Having a piece, big sheet of aluminum foil works the best. Across the room, I have another similar circuit to that one running over here with a piece of aluminum foil and LED lights going on. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to check the AC current frequency and voltage in between the antenna and the circuit. I have it set up on AC amps right now. 0.7 microamps is what we're getting. 0.8 jumped up to 0.8. Got it hooked up to the antenna here. Threw that over uh, to the coil. And that was the current. No, I can switch right here. I think I can test the free. There's a frequency. There are radio stations at 1300 and 1360. So that's that part. I just switched the meter over to read AC voltage and right around 4.07 volts. So write that in. And I also wanna check the AC voltage in between the antenna and the virtual ground. So I'm gonna disconnect some of this stuff. So I just disconnected this circuit altogether now, and this is the voltage reading I'm getting just between the antenna and the virtual ground. We're at 2.68 volts. Okay, that was right here. Um, I also wanna check it AC voltage probably from here to here in case there's no ground attached. I'll get an AC reading right where before these diodes right off this pickup strip 
and the antenna. So I think I can do that without setting anything down. I think I can. There, so that's right off the pickup strip. Virtual ground disconnected. And I have 3.52 volts there. That was, that's a, Ground. That's from the okay. Now I am going to check the current in different spots along here. Probably done with the AC voltage right now. Now I got it set up just to test the AC current between the coil and the aluminum foil plate which of course made the LEDs go out, but this is coming off the coil here, oops. And to the plate, aluminum foil plate, and we're at 0.6 microamps. So we lost a little bit from what we had over here. Write that in. Point six microamps. And what else did I want to test with the AC? AC current right here in between the pickup strip and the diodes. I want to check that too. All right, I got it connected up. This is coming off of that pickup strip through the meter back to these diodes that's where was that right here that's the current 0.2 microamps it's not a whole lot right there right now i'm checking the shorter where the load is so the lights are not on i just have the meter running from one diode back around up to the other and we are at 128, 25 microamps. This is a little bit lower than it was the other day. The weather changes stuff to, I'll say, 127 microamps. Shorter current. And it'll be really easy to check the loaded amps. This will be amps going through these diodes. We are at 50, 56, I'll just say 56 microamps. And I'll hook my other meter up at the same time so we can check the voltage across here too. So I... Hooked up my other meter, DC volts, across the LEDs there. At the same time, the current. The current has actually gone up a little bit right now. This wasn't because I attached this. It, just, it had just gone up by itself. Sometimes just my body moving around will change things. But we are at um, 10.5 volts under load. Write that down. Um, under load, let's see, 10.5 volts, that's DC, DC current, and DC voltage across these, there are two rows of five in series. These two rows are in parallel, each string here is five in series. And now, let's see, I will disconnect. I want to check the open voltage. I think that's the last thing I had on here to check. Open voltage DC. I could probably do that by just connecting 
these LEDs out of here. Let's see. I need to connect this to here. Connect this other one over to here. Now, I hooked it backwards, but there's a DC voltage maximum of like 20, 21, 22 volts. That's an open circuit. There's nothing going through this right now. It's kind of a messy thing right there. I got the leads backwards. That's why we got that negative sign there. But we're 21, 23, anywhere in there for voltage. I'll just call it 21 and a half. I think that's about everything I wanted to test on here. This over here, I got this as in kilohertz. I just wrote it, but that's about what the frequencies we we're getting. Current voltage. Hmm. I think that's all I had planned to check. Pretty interesting. This had gone up to 60 microamps. So it's just taking a small amount of current off the antenna. I think I can understand why then I can have these other ones hooked up. If this was pulling any more current than that off the antenna, I would not be able to have these, these other LEDs going. But they're still going. Uh, I don't know what else I can say about that right now. I know some commenters in the other videos said it reminded them of work that other people have done, a Slayer Exciter, where people have frequency generators and then they pick up electricity, the radiating electricity off of different uh, objects like a one wire connection or wireless transfer of energy with an Everminkle plug. I know the lid motor channel, he did quite a bit with that. Um, he was trying to replicate the Dr. Stifler work. And there was also Paul on Inventor 3 channel. He's still doing stuff with a frequency generator and collecting energy to light LEDs with his circuitry. I know he had some kind of play. I'm not quite sure what his circuitry was, but I think he's still working on it. And another commenter asked about replicating this. And I'm saying, well, the hardest part of trying to replicate this would be stringing up the long wire antenna. Mine is about 33 feet off the ground, stretched between the house and the barn. And <laughs> that'd probably be the biggest job. The rest of the stuff is just cheap stuff you can put together. But you need to be in a good location where there are some transmission towers. I don't know how this would work if it was further out in the country. I That would probably be an interesting experiment. Take this, string up an antenna way out, away from any power lines or transmission towers, see what I could get. I guess that would be something I have to do next summer. That would be pretty interesting. But anyway, I thought this experiment was pretty interesting. And if you stuck through the video this long, I'd like to thank you for your time. And I'll see you again.